What are you doing? Uh, What's the matter? Weird. This is the first time Mark and I have actually just worked alone in a while. Marriage Counseling 101. This is either gonna be a success or a massive fail. Enjoy the entertainment. Uh oh. He was unloading and he stopped real fast. Like it's one of those ones that you're like, oh no. to say I've waited a long time for this it's coming together and I've got a little piece of Amy with me she gave me that it's nice to finally give her a spot where she needs to be which is watching over me and laughing at me and I get to hang out with my ladies but yeah this is the office I'm so excited So I am going to our hay storage, outdoor hay storage. Uh, I'm still on last year's bales, if you can believe it or not. Uh, these two rows are from this year. We haven't cracked into them yet. We have a heck of a fourth cut here that uh, Mark is actually terminating as uh, we are growing another stand next year. This is our third year with this, or fourth year with this. Time for new hay. Oh, yay. really at all.
uh, I was just checking in on my little lammy that we casted yesterday and it wasn't up very much until I casted that other leg yesterday and it's up today. What are you doing in there? Hey. How you doing? How's your lucky? How's your little lucky? You got a full berry. How are you walking? How is it? Can I see? Kind of dragging it, that's okay. Kind of dragging it, but that's okay. <laughs> Taking a bunch of straw with it. A little snow plow. What are you doing? My favorite time of day. Sleepy time. We have a really cute brown one. We've got a couple this time around, but this one's really cute. This is another brown one. It's really cute too. A bunch of you were asking me in my last video uh, what the billies were. Most of them, the pure black ones, I believe, are all boys. And the one Billy is a boy, and then the twins that look exactly the same, they're both girls. So we only had two girls out of, I think, five. I think there's five. I am on the hunt for a lamb that Carissa said didn't look very happy. So I'm just on the lookout. All right, I just checked my text and she said red 72. That's another reason why we number these lambs. Once you get over the hundreds, once you get over 10, uh, you kind of lose track, unless they're cute like you. It's my cute little fuzzy one that the ewe lamb had. What's the matter? Okay, this is the second lamb that's done this. They just can't really get up very well. So I'm wondering if it's a little bit of white. Oh, here we go. Look at its front legs, just like the other one. Huh. Mama, stay with your baby. Ewe lamb problems. This is the other one that we caught today. Uh, they still don't look uh, great. Uh, See, same thing. Uh, Weird. I don't know what that would be. I might text my vet. I just got off the phone with my vet, and sure enough, it's joint ill. So isn't that ironic? Because this is the first group I dipped every single lamp. I've got those two and I just noticed one more was limping on one leg. So I'm still getting joint hill. We bed every single day and <laughs> Rex said, you need to bed more. And I said, you know what? You actually have me because first thing in the morning, uh, we don't bed until, we don't bed until, I don't know, eight o'clock in the morning, whenever kind of lambing's at a bit of a reprieve. And by then that pen, because those ewes are digging, and of course that's where they lay their lamb, they dig up the old, the, the pack underneath. And the pack underneath, of course, is wetter. So if they drop those lambs, fresh lambs, right down in that, and that, that navel is exposed to that bacteria right away, then of course they're gonna translocate it right up. When we are here, we move them right away and dip them right away. So I think we probably, hoping we've saved more than we're gonna have go down with Joinil. And there is some treatment for it, but for me, if you don't catch it that first day, you struggle with it, like the, the life of the lamb. It's not a fun little bug to work with. And I think, I honestly think once it's in your barn, I think you struggle with it. I gave, uh, I gave both lambs an antibiotic. Um, the one already has had a shot, so it, it's likely why it's up and walking a little better, not great. Uh, this other one's still laying down, but there's one more that's limping that I have to give some to. Right now I'm putting on, uh, I'm setting up my creep areas already. Get that out of the way before I'm needed in the fields because I see Mark is moving equipment. <laughs> creep area set up there. Uh, I will set up another one once we get some more lambs happening and figuring out the logistics of this big pen. 
and I also set up another bottle area here. So what I'm hoping to do is move the real strong ones over there, move them over here, and then this little section can still be a training pen for when those new lambs come. Uh, so if there are any bottle babies, at least we can open this pen up, put the little babies here. These guys can jump over there as a little graduation pen. And then there's lots of room for like, big ones, medium ones, and little new ones. I'm trying to kind of improve this whole setup every time I do it. I just kind of learn stuff every time and go from there. This board is coming in handy when I treat a lamb now uh, because of my paint on their lambs I can actually write down these so I know I treated these guys today uh, in pen 1 blue 13 red 72 and in pen 2 I did green 4 with rust floor so I did that Friday which means we have to check them again Sunday so every other day and uh, that's a nice little note for Carissa to watch. And then she can let me know if they're limping again, I can retreat them. If they're not, then we got it. This is a nice uh, tracker. I could do it on the Gallagher too, but for Carissa's sake, it's nicer on this. Good morning from the top of the bin. It's lovely up here. We're out of corn everywhere. So Mark and I are just filling up everything before we start doing beans today. Wish us luck. This is the first time Mark and I have actually just worked alone in a while. Marriage Counseling 101. This is either going to be a success or a massive fail. Enjoy the entertainment. to show you guys my new addition. Ta-da! Freshly built from Walmart. Kind of makes things a bit squishy. For everybody that thinks I need a coffee machine, I do have one. I've got a Keurig, some granola bars. I got my fridge, I just need to buy some cream for my coffee. And I separated these two guys out and uh, I'm gonna use this for part of my desk and uh, this for just cups and mugs and plates or whatever we want over there. Thinking about putting a microwave here, perhaps, or here, one or the other. So that is that. Started hanging up some stuff that I've had literally sitting on a floor, and then some wool art that you guys have been sending me. I still can't get over that. We are just getting the buggy and tractor ready. Grain cart, buggy whatever you guys want to call it. So I'm just dropping Mark off. He's getting pretty excited to start beans. So uh, we're actually threading some weather needles as per usual. August was so dry and September has been so wet. I think we're pushing five inches, four to five inches of rain. And what, what are we at right now? September 18th. <gasps> 
it September 18th? Oh my god, it's September 18th. It's my sister's birthday. I am gonna go and I will get back to you guys in a bit. I have a call to make. Everybody's doing corn silage. The eagle has landed. Need a hand? It only shuts so far. There's just enough room for some beans to maybe find their way out. So we just tape up the bottom. That should hold there, I think. Good old gorilla tape. It's my new duct tape. Not really sure how I did it, but I locked myself out of a running tractor. Best part of soybean harvest? Snacks. Beauty. We are just calibrating the combine. He's uh, He's got a good chunk off already, but we haven't actually just done an official calibration of everything. The yields so far look pretty good. Moisture was 14... 14.6, I think, when we started but he's, we've been at it for a couple hours, so I'm sure it's starting to come down a little bit. Can you see me? I think when I have my glasses on, I lose my exposure. <laughs> so weird, cameras are weird. Anyway, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit and give you a recap of what we're doing, but it's uh, so far so good. He loves his combine, so he says. I got 8380. Bingo. And I think we're over half done this field, which is nice. It's, I think, an 80-acre field. Uh, this new combine does does punch through soybeans really quick, so it's uh, it's kind of nice to see. But what we're doing is it's just Mark and I, so I am running the buggy for Mark. Green Buggy is just, he basically uh, unloads his soybeans or crop, whatever we're doing, into this bigger kind of buggy that all this does is transports the grain so he unloads on the go and then I can take it and fill the gravity wagons uh, I think we've we've got um, eight nine ten wagons uh, they'll be full after the next few dumps tonight and tomorrow morning probably tomorrow morning we'll take a few minutes and actually unload all those wagons into 
the, the bins. The good thing about the mornings is we, we really can't get at soybeans typically until noon or, or shortly after. So we have all morning to do whatever we need to do with the crop from the day before. So we can do it with two people. A lot easier with three, but we've lost our kids. We haven't lost our kids. One is at school and Jack actually went on a four-wheeling trip this weekend, so we didn't even, we couldn't even get him to help. Jess is gonna come home tomorrow. I think we're gonna take off some corn silage for the sheep, so we've lined up. My dad's coming, and Jess is gonna help, and then, of course, Ethan is chopping it, and Bob is bagging it. I want to give you a quick tour while Mark is filling back up the combine here of what my cab looks like. All right, so basically, this is just the tractor stuff, but this is, uh, this is new this year, so I can basically see what Mark is doing, what speed he's going. Once in a while it flashes what the yield is doing. Uh, but overall, I think, oh shoot, I hit something. There we go. Uh, I think it's, so right now he's currently at like 64 bushel, which is amazing for soybean, for us. Um, this is the, the uh, weight, that's how much weight, that's how many pounds are in the buggy right now. So this is just a scale that's hooked up to the buggy. It's Bluetooth. So I have it and Mark also can uh, access that weight. And as we unload the, uh, the bushel, like the actual total of the field, it, it accumulates. So we, we typically don't know the final number on these fields until the last drop. And then this here is pretty blurry, but it's my camera. The combine, the combine shines the camera onto the buggy and I can see the positioning of my wagon uh, according to the combine. But um, yeah. It's good to be back in the buggy. It's been it's been a few uh, years since Jess has been home, but uh, it's funny. It's like riding a horse. You know, just get back on it. Funny little story. It's, uh, tomorrow is Mark and I. It's our anniversary. It's our 23rd anniversary. Can you believe that? I don't know how. We're only 30. <laughs> Lies. Anyways, uh, so he got on the CB, and he was like, "Have I told you how much I love?" And then he said, "My combine." <laughs> I'm like, oh, we almost had it. We will be celebrating our anniversary as we do every year, which is uh, in the fields, which is good. That's where we want to be. We can celebrate our anniversary anytime because typically what we do is go out for supper. What do you guys do for your anniversaries? Let me know. I might be more depressed, but comment below. What do you do with your significant other for an anniversary? Maybe we can get some good ideas. Or why don't you guys tell Mark what he should do with me or I should do with me? No, don't answer that. Forget that. Forget it. Forget it. I'm not really sure what he's doing, but it looks really cool. The light. We are on our last load for the night, and uh, on the last round, Mark stopped the combine. He was unloading, and he stopped real fast. Like, it's one of those ones that you're like, oh, no and uh, lift up the head real quick. And I'm like, oh no. Got out of the combine, and then he walked like through the soybeans. So I'm like, what is he doing? He picked up a big stone that he found, and I was like, how in the heck did he find that? Well, it turns out Lauren, our good friend Lauren, she works for Bayer, and they're doing some fungicide trials. She found that big rock this summer when she was just scouting the field, and she put a pin it, like she sent Mark a pin of where it was in the field. He walked right to it, grabbed it, threw it in the rock pile. So it's like technology can be very useful. So thank you, Lauren. You just saved some major heartbreak. <laughs>